In today's video, I'm going to be covering the most common mistakes I see foreigners making when buying a home in Portugal. From small little hiccups that cost a little bit of time to mistakes that can cost you tens or hundreds of thousands of euros. Hi guys, it's Russell from Portugal Buyers where we help expats move and purchase property in Portugal with ease. The first mistake is not having quality legal representation. Now many of the bigger and more costly mistakes can be avoided by having the right legal representation on your side. They will make sure all the documents are in order and legal. They'll give you expert advice tailored to your situation and they will also draft and review the CPCV contract, also known as a primary contract here in Portugal. Now it is vital that this is done correctly as there is no escrow in Portugal. So your initial deposit will be sent directly to the seller's bank accounts. They can also add additional contingencies into the CPCV contract, like fixing the pool or legalizing extension of the property prior to going through with the purchase. Make sure you get the right legal representation working for solely you, the buyer. Many times real estate agents will recommend a lawyer that's representing both the seller and the buyer in the transaction and this may cause misrepresentation. So be careful so your interests are fully aligned with the legal team that represents you. The next mistake is using a dual agent. Now a dual agent is a real estate agent that represents both the buyer and the seller in the property transaction. When working with a typical real estate agent here in Portugal, they will only show you the few properties they have listed on their website and therefore not giving you access to the whole property property market and with this they may withhold vital information because they're going to really want to sell you those few properties they have with them so therefore if there's an illegal extension or there's something that may have mold on the walls or anything else they may withhold this from you and you might make a poor decision because of that because you actually trust the agent that you're with now be very cautious of this because it can cause a big conflict of interest and they do not have your incentives aligned with them. Now there are many other reasons why using a dual agent could cause choosing the wrong home or overpaying for the property as well as they don't represent your interest in the negotiation, but we'll get to that in a little bit. In Portugal, we don't have an MLS system. However, we do have real estate portals such as Idealista or Supercasa, which anyone can list a property on and has thousands of listings throughout Portugal. Now these portals can be excellent tools, but they only account for a fraction of the properties in the market. So you are missing out on potentially finding your dream home that isn't listed on one of these. Along with this, anyone without a real estate agent can list a property on portals such as Idealista and Supercasa. So there are plenty of scam listings and they aren't accredited all the time. So they might not have the right paperwork and you're not gonna be represented properly by a reliable real estate agent. So be very cautious of private deals. The other and best option you have is using an exclusive buyer's agent that has access to the whole property market, takes care of you throughout the entire process and has all of their incentives aligned with yours 100%. So you can find the perfect property and get it for the best possible price as they'll also help you, help you in the negotiation process. Now we are an exclusive buyer's agent that's called Portugal Buyers and we can help you purchase a property in Portugal with ease from the comfort of your home. The next mistake is very common and it is believing that you can build anything you want on the property that you have just bought. Now this is a big misconception here in Portugal as you do not have the ability to build anything you want if it's on a plot of land or a house that you just bought in terms of an extension or actually building one completely from scratch. In the majority of cases, you're gonna have to get a project approved by the local council or the camera here in Portugal. For this reason, it is absolutely essential that you do thorough due diligence and that it is conducted in the right way by a proper legal team and your real estate agent so you know exactly what you're getting into and you have clear expectations and understandings of what you can and cannot build and how long the planning permission may take for you to be able to build on that plot of land or extend that property that you have just bought. The next mistake is understanding and budgeting for all the extra costs and closing costs involved in purchasing a property in Portugal. The main closing cost you need to be aware of is the IMT, initial transfer tax, and the stamp duty. Both taxes are paid before you sign the final deed. The IMT is on a progressive basis ranging from 1% to 8% of the purchase price with deductibles. The stamp duty is on a fixed price of 0.8% for urban residential properties. We always recommend budgeting for an extra 10% for all closing costs above the purchase price of your property. Although it never normally goes that high, it's always good to be conservative. 
Once you have found your dream property and can't wait to move forward, there is one crucial thing that almost all foreigners don't do and 99% of real estate agents never suggest. This is getting a property inspection done by a licensed professional. Doing this one simple step can save you from getting into a nightmare situation and potential money pits. A home inspection is something that is unavoidable when buying a used property because it can reveal issues which are not visible by the untrained eye. Piping, electricity, roofing, windows, moisture, and a lot of other things can represent a hefty hidden bill. Even if the property you are purchasing is brand new, it is still wise to get a property inspection done because it's very frequent for builders to deliver a very different product than agreed originally with the buyer. And in many cases of worse quality with defects which can seem non-existent during the excitement of receiving a new home. What would look like a simple repair or maintenance job can in fact be a significant cost that you would want to consider before accepting the property. The next mistake is during the negotiation process. After negotiating countless properties for our clients, it is very clear that almost all properties up for sale have a decent amount of negotiation room priced in. So don't be shy at this stage as it can save you a significant sum. As I mentioned before, using a dual agent, they know exactly how excited you are about the property that you're negotiating on and they are fully incentivized to get the highest price possible as they are paid entirely by commission. This is where we come in. We have saved our clients a lot of money during the negotiation process as we have our incentives aligned with theirs and we can just you know, negotiate and understand and hide that excitement away from the seller's agent. The next mistake is the tendency to accept the first mortgage offer without exploring alternatives. To avoid this misstep, consider a strategic approach by obtaining pre-approval from multiple banks. This not only provides you with a comprehensive understanding of the available rates, but it also allows you to leverage these offers against each other. Armed with pre-approvals, you can negotiate more favorable terms, potentially saving you significant costs over the lifetime of your mortgage. However, buying a property in cash can help in the negotiation process because sellers don't really like to wait for appraisals to be done and mortgages to come through. So if you are buying in cash, you may have a little bit more leverage to play around with in the negotiation process and save a few thousand here and there. The next very common mistake is purchasing a property that has an illegal extension unauthorized swimming pool or missing documents. Illegal extensions in Portugal are very common because of the amount of restrictions and time it takes to get projects approved by the local council. This is where having quality legal representation is absolutely necessary as they will do all the due diligence on the property, making sure there are no unauthorized extensions. So let's imagine you have found the perfect property and it turns out not to be completely legal. What should you do? Well, don't panic. Make an objective analysis. In many cases, the unauthorized parts are not of great importance. And just because a property has unauthorized extension doesn't mean it can't be bought or sold. However, if you feel unsettled about the unauthorized extension and it may cause you stress, then I fully suggest not moving ahead with the property. So make a level-headed decision. Please subscribe to stay up to date with all of the latest content so you can move and purchase property in Portugal with ease. And if you would like to hear more about our exclusive buyer service, you can click the first link in the description below to book a free call with us. I look forward to seeing you there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.